Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome to Week in Nintendo. Each Saturday morning, I like to go back through the past week's biggest Nintendo headlines so you can pour yourself a big bowl of cereal and get yourself all caught up on all things Nintendo. So with all that out of the way, let's go through this week's Nintendo news. On Monday, we learned that Reggie would be returning to the Game Awards stage as a presenter for the 2019 show, but don't get too excited about this because, well, you'll see. On Tuesday, we had Major League Baseball and Sony announcing that the MLB The Show series would no longer be a PlayStation exclusive starting in 2021, with Nintendo immediately following up the announcement with a retweet and a simple baseball emoji. Now, while this isn't full confirmation that the series will be heading to Switch, I'd say it's all but certain at this point. Tuesday also brought a Nintendo Indie World Showcase, which gave us a preview of upcoming indie games heading to Switch in 2020. The showcase started off with a trailer for Sport Story, a follow-up to Sidebar Games' charming golf-themed RPG adventure Golf Story, which I really enjoyed my time with. And it might be a weird point to bring up, but I really feel that Golf Story has the absolute best implementation of HD Rumble of any Switch title this far. You can really feel the difference when you hit your ball with a different driver, or if you land your ball in a sand trap or water feature. It's just a cool little detail. And while Sports Story still appears to have plenty of golf gameplay, we also saw tennis, volleyball, baseball, and soccer with crossover play between each of those sports and what looks like a heavier emphasis on adventure and exploration. We also saw teasers for other upcoming Switch indie titles, including Streets of Rage 4, Gleamlight, Bake and Switch, Murder by Numbers, Odd World, Stranger's Wrath, Liberated, and Boyfriend Dungeon, as well as another look at the ridiculously adorable Skatebird that we first saw showed off at last year's Kind of Funny Game Showcase. And then probably the game I was the most excited about other than Sports Story, Super Mash. Super Mash lets you mash up a ton of different game genres with some really fun and interesting looking results. Choose from genres like platformer, JRPG, action-adventure, metroidvania, stealth, and shoot 'em up and then mix two of those together and play through and see the unexpected results and share those with your friends. I'll be picking this game up day one when it comes to Switch in May 2020. Then to close out the showcase, we got a reveal trailer for Axiom Verge 2. I actually never picked up the original Axiom Verge on Switch, but I did play through it on Wii U and absolutely loved it. If you're a fan of classic Metroidvanias, Axiom Verge absolutely deserves your attention, and everything we saw in the trailer for the sequel seems to improve upon the groundwork that was laid in the critically acclaimed original. Look for Axiom Verge 2 coming to Switch in fall 2020. On Thursday evening, we had the 2019 Game Awards. Now, I really tried to keep my expectations in check here, but after last year's Nintendo announcements and the fact that Reggie would be there this year presenting, I was really hopeful that we might see perhaps a Breath of the Wild 2 release date reveal, or maybe finally something related to Metroid Prime Trilogy HD. But unfortunately, other than taking home a few awards and then trailers for Bravely Default 2 and No More Heroes 3 coming to Switch, as well as a new Marvel Ultimate Alliance DLC trailer, Nintendo is basically absent from the show. Microsoft, by far, had the biggest announcement of the night, unveiling the next Xbox, which they're calling Xbox Series X, along with a trailer for the sequel to Hellblade running on the next-gen hardware. Really impressive looking stuff. Back to the Nintendo side, we had Doug Bowser taking the stage to receive Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's award for Best Fighting Game, and we also saw Nintendo take home the award for Best Family Game for Luigi's Mansion 3. Fire Emblem Three Houses ended up winning Best Strategy Game, as well as the fan-picked Player's Voice Award. Reggie took the stage to announce Fresh Indie Game of the Year, which went to Disco Elysium. It was so good seeing Reggie up there, he's such a good public speaker and comes across as so genuine, but man, I was really hoping for some sort of Nintendo hype reveal after he gave out that award. But hopefully next year we see something related to Metroid Prime Trilogy HD, we'll see. And in case you haven't seen already, Game of the Year ended up going to Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Okay, so I think that about does it for this week's current Nintendo news. But before we go, it's time for 20 Years Ago Today, where we look back at what was happening with Nintendo 20 years ago this week. And not a ton happening this week, 
Mario Party 2 was just about to release on the Nintendo 64 in Japan on December 17th, and then we are also awaiting the release of Harvest Moon 64 in the States, which would be coming December 22nd. So it certainly seems like a little bit of a lull in the world of Nintendo around this time. Things certainly didn't seem to be happening at the same pace as they are today. So if you stuck around through all that and like what you saw, please consider liking and subscribing. And until next time, have a great weekend, play some video games, and I'll see you guys next week.